Hey everyone, um, I just wanted to make a quick video to update you on what I've been up to lately um, and what to expect for this year in developments. One thing is, you might have seen it already, is the version 3.1 of the Open Astro Guider, which now comes with a USB-C plug um, through a little custom PCB um, like this one. Um, it just makes the wiring easier and of course has the USB-C plug um, so you don't have to deal with this fixed cable that the earlier versions had and which I personally found quite annoying sometimes so um, 3.1 now has this little PCB um, to plug the, the sensor in and the heater and the um, switch which also makes the assembly quite a lot easier um, yeah, this uh, this will release in quite a f quite soon. Actually, I'm just waiting for these to be finished producing in mass uh, in China and then be shipped to me. They should be here in a few days, and when they're here, I will release the parts too, um, and the PCBs will be available at the shop. Um, the other thing is, you might have also seen it on Discord is the new mount the open astro explorer um now i've been working on this for quite a while um and it's only now becoming usable but there's still a lot to be done um i will explain it in a second so yeah my my main reason was um i wanted a mount to 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 be able to travel with or just to throw in a backpack and and take on a on a little trip or so because as you'll know um neither old and especially not ohm are particularly port portable um and yeah for for some time i thought about reworking out um to be foldable or something but uh, it it really didn't it wouldn't have worked really well so i decided on making a new mount um and this one is actually inspired by ohm's declination axis so it's essentially ohm's declination axis put into a mount you have the two 6012 bearings um, as the main bearings with a 40 40 extrusion in the middle and then just the 2020 bolted on top um, for the ra axis and yeah i, I just noticed on, on oats that this this configuration is quite sturdy so i thought i'll, I'll just use it for for its own mount um, and get a way smaller form factor this way um, yeah let's see so this would be its configuration ignore the belt that's flying around here i will at some point design something to store that a little bit nicer um, but yeah, this would be the configuration how you would transport it so um, quite small compared to the other mounts actually um also ignore that it's still moving I, I don't have a i have to design something to hold it in place for transport um something like oh um, i think i had a i've called it a parking brake or so something like this um but yeah this would be the the size of it um for transport so you can literally just put it in your backpack like this um all the mechanics are protected um the gearboxes and everything so not easy to damage it uh, if it's flying around or so um, nothing like the declination axis here I'm not sure if I will leave it like this because I'm not happy with it really as a, a bought a planetary gearbox with a 10 to 1 um, which is relatively cheap but it, I'm, I'm not not happy with how it looks this way with the gearbox on top um, I might rework that or find a different solution so um, it might even get smaller at some point um, maybe I can fit a warm gear drive or something like that in there uh, but yeah anyway so so yeah this is still quite in development um, so yeah it might change a lot um, so the idea was um, of course that I wanted to keep the belt drives like the other mounts because well, that's what we're doing and we, have, we, we know they work um, so I didn't want to get that gifted up, but um, of course these large wheels take space. Um, so my idea was to make them removable for transport. 
Um, so when you're actually using the mount, you kind of just clip this on with magnets. Um, this would be the RA wheels and then just move it around the belt like this and it's, it's still a bit fiddly I have to rework the attachment a little bit it's not quite nice yet um, but you whoop, you route the belt around yeah, come. like this and then the belt tension will hold the the two parts in place well enough um, so they don't randomly fall off and then uh, you can tighten this little holder here with a screw um, these screws will be thumb screws in the end um, so you don't need tools in the field um, so something like like this I just didn't have the proper length in right now um, so yeah at, at some point these will be adjustable by hand same as this this is another um, belt tension adjustment this is a little screw that pushes in a idler um, into the belt so you can fine adjust the tension a bit better this will also get a thumb screw at some point um, and then same for the declination um, it just attaches with magnets and yeah, you see they, they, they keep falling out I need to glue them in or something um, ignore that please yes so it just attaches like this you can route the belt around and then tighten the belt with the screw that will be a thumb screw at the end this and then you have a functional mount yeah so you got your um, Arca Swiss plate here on the declination axis this could technically also be um, replaced by a Vixen uh, clamp this just bolts into there's two bolts that bolt into the printed part here and the middle bolt bolts into a 2020 that runs in here on two bearings so you can well rotate it so also quite sturdy this way um yeah in here let me see if i can get that out really quick in here you have the ra gearbox which is um the same mechanically the same as ohm's gearboxes I'm um, just in a slightly different layout. So you have um, two stages with a 16 to 84 teeth pulleys, uh, which gives you a total reduction of 9 to 1. Um, but of course, for, for saving space, I had to redesign it a bit. So the layout is a bit odd um, because the two stage, stages are not centered. It's like slightly off center, as you can see because um, otherwise it just wouldn't fit um, and on this side you have two screws that pull out the middle stage in order to to tighten um, the belt at the same time additionally um, you don't have a mechanism yet for pole alignment so for alt arts uh, yet so for right now you have to use your uh, tripod's uh, tilt function, um, but I will design something that, that clamps on here that's removable, um, probably with auto PA. Um, yeah, so that's that's still to be done. Um, and another thing for polar alignment, you have a little uh, laser module here in the back that sits right in the middle of the 4040 and shines out here through the center of the rotation um, and this is just to to help you do a rough polar alignment like if you're if you don't have your computer with you just want to take some quick pictures without um, super precise PA 
um, this should be quite good. Um, I still have to find a re reliable way to properly align this. I don't know if you can see this, the, the laser is held in place by four screws, which you can access through these holes here in the side. Um, and then, you know, um, adjust the direction the laser is pointing in. And um, of course, this has to be aligned with exactly with the rotational axis. So it's actually pointing straight out and I find that a bit hard yet. Um, so I have to find a reliable way to, to properly do that. So yeah, um, can cover up the gearbox here again with this little cover. Um, I did have some clear nights a few days ago for like, the first time literally in months. Um, so I could test this a little bit. And even though it's of course still a prototype, I had used it with my uh, with my photo line, um, which weighs in at about three and a half kilos plus counterweights, and it did perform quite good. Um, I was quite surprised by how well it worked. Actually, um, it held the, the polar alignment through the entire rotation. Um, the guiding worked decently well. It, it ran at around one arc second RMS, uh, uh, plus minus, you know, um, and even untracked it, it uh, worked, uh, sorry, unguided, it worked quite nicely. Um, I was able to do uh, some, I did some 300 second exposures, even though uh, not all of them came out perfectly, but some did, um, but I also did some 180 and 20 seconds, and they all just were pretty much perfect, which is quite impressive for, for such, such a small mount at um, 360 millimeter on, on APS-C. Um, so, so quite nice. Um, yeah, counterweight. Of course, if you're using a heavier scope like this on this, you will need a counterweight, which is pretty much like Ohm's counterweight. So it's, it's a 20-20 bar um, that just bolts on here. And you can attach like random sports weights, um, which are way cheaper than, than the Astro weights, of course. Um, and yeah, this worked quite well on Ohm too. These these weights are quite cheap, um, and you can get them in the necessary sizes. I think here in Europe they have a diameter of thirty millimeters, and then in the US you would need a two inch diameter, but they they are quite available and cheap. So that's nice, um, and then you can use uh, heavier scopes on this too. For smaller uh, weights, if you just have your diesel R here with a 50 millimeter, I don't think you will really need a um, counterweight. It, it should be fine just without one. And then, um, as you'll note, um, there are no electronics yet, so the cables here from the motor are still flying around um, and I will probably have to design like a custom PCB. I will probably do an ESP32, um, you know, like plug-in board or something for the drivers and everything um, because, well, yeah, if you see the MKS, it, it just, there's just no reasonable space to put this anywhere without making the whole mount way bigger. Um, even though uh, Arduino Mega doesn't really fit anywhere, so I will probably go for an ESP with a custom PCB that just plugs in. Um, and this should have space, um, I already measured it out, there should be space here uh, in the base uh, for the electronics, so um, it wouldn't really make the mount even bigger. And then, of course, um, I can hide the, the cables in the printed parts so they don't stick out and everything. And just for a comparison, um, how big this mount is, I can put it out here next to it um, so you can see. It's actually quite a bit smaller and more compact. But um, to be honest, it's not super lightweight. Um, it probably weighs roughly the same as Ode. It weighs about three kilos. I think Ode also weighs like that, 
which is due to, of course, the, the huge um, 60, 12 bearings and everything. And the motors, they, 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 they are quite heavy, but it also makes the whole design, you know, nice and sturdy. Um, it really feels like you're, you're having something in your hand, you know, it's not, it not, it's not flimsy at all. Um, so that's nice. So, yeah. Um, I will probably need some more months uh, on, on, on this design until it's like a version 1.0 release. Um, but there are the files already on GitHub. If you're brave enough, um, you can already build it in this stage. Um, although the, the usual beta um, warnings apply um, because I will change quite a lot on the design and you would have to reprint quite a lot. And there's also no guides or anything.